Rally. And we will be presenting Wireless Body Areas and Center Networks for Biomedical Applications. So the problem that these networks go to address are the in-hospital and out-of-hospital methods of uh, collecting data for patients. So current medical facilities use static, static data collection, which means that uh, doctors are collecting sporadic data, and this data can only hold true for exactly when that test is being performed. So a patient goes into the hospital and the nurse uh, calculates their vital signs, blood pressure, temperature, etc. But as an extreme example, let's say the patient starts hemorrhaging after this vital signs were collected. There would be no way to detect that drastic change in blood pressure without doing a whole other test, and thus the response time would be severely delayed. Um, doctors also want to uh, monitor patients even outside of the hospital, and they often use high-level cameras to monitor the trajectory of patient movement. And this is very accurate, but it's, it is also flawed in that the patient would have to be in the vicinity of where the cameras were located, and uh, not to mention they are very hard to deliver and very costly. So the solution, what we've been researching, are the body area networks. It might sound like a very fancy name, but it's actually just a cluster of wearable computing sensors that look like this, that can be deployed all around the body. And the key thing about these sensors is that they operate in real time. So as the patient is moving and carrying out their daily schedule outside of the hospital, uh, the data is constantly being collected on these sensors and sent via Bluetooth to wherever the data needs to go. And we'll explain, explain this process in more detail. Okay, so the intent of our research project was to explore context awareness, which means external factors that change interpretation of the situation. So ideally, we would um, use a vital sign sensor, such as a sensor that measures heart rate, in conjunction with an accelerometer, which would measure kinematic data or the patient's movement. And so we would understand the context by pairing those two. So let's take, for example, a patient with heart disease. And um, we would place the two sensors on the patient, and if we look at the data, we see a spike in the heart rate data, then we would move over to the kinematic data and take a look at that. So if the kinematic data indicates that the patient started running or started moving very rapidly um, while the spike occurred, then we would understand that the spike was because of the patient's movement. However, if we see that the patient was sitting still when the spike occurred, the doctor might see that there's a cause for concern because there's nothing to stimulate the change in the heart rate. So by using kinematics and vital signs together, we can better understand the context of the patient's death. So the goal of our project was to actually create a wireless body area network and focus on the kinematics side of the process. Uh, we are using an accelerometer, which measures the movement, to measure the behaviors of, say, a smoker. If the sensor attached to their arm, we're trying to detect smoking behavior. And we did this by splitting the project into two parts. One part was actually programming and modifying the sensors to send out the data, um, data collection. And the other part was data visualization, which we then um, use a computer and a program called Unity3D uh, to create a 3D model of the patient's arm and visualize the data in real time. So the tools that we use for this are the sensors themselves. They're called shimmer modes, and I'll go into more detail a little later. Uh, we use Unity 3D, which is actually a game development kit, which we use to create the 3D models of the data. And finally, we use Bluetooth connections to actually set up a connection between the sensor and the computer to set up this wireless body area network. So here is our program design that we used for the entire process. Uh, the first thing we did was program the sensors to collect acceleration data, and then that data was sent via Bluetooth wirelessly, where it was then picked up by the host computer. The computer then analyzed and visualized this data using Unity 3D, and then after that was complete, the, it could be potentially applied to biomedical applications by pairing it with the other vital science sensor data. So the actual sensors we use are called shimmer modes. Um, it's right here, as Pasha mentioned before. Uh, they are small, self-contained, programmable sensors about the size of two quarters laid end-to-end. -end. And the reason why I say they are self-contained is because they actually contain an operating system called TinyOS on the sensor that you can directly load programs into to modify the behavior of the sensor. We use a programming language called NSC to write the acceleration program for the sensors, which just collects acceleration data from its movement in the environment and then sends that data out and packages over Bluetooth. So I'm glad you mentioned that aspect of our procedure was actually a Bluetooth connection in order to link the sensors to the computer and effectively transfer the information from the sensors to the program on the computer that would actually model the information and create a visualization 
of whatever information they receive. So then in order to do this, we set up Charter, which is basically a program that sets up a serial connection, meaning that it allows information to be obtained by through Charter and then transferred onto the computer via computer. Um, we also relied on accelerometer data, um, and through the accelerometer, we able to collect um, information about uh, changes in the acceleration of the three axes. So in the X, Y, and the axes, we were able to actually graph information and through Shimmer Connect, another program that we used, we were able to uh, plot out the different changes in acceleration of the human application. So in the picture here, we can see that if the patient were wearing the sensor and things like our wrist, um, we'd be able to detect changes in acceleration in a lot of those cases. So here is a screenshot of the Shimmer Connect program. As you can see, the three axes, the X, Y, and Z axes, are graphed <coughs> in order. And the Shimmer Connect program would actually update the graphs in real time as the sensors collected acceleration data. And we were using these graphs to try and predict our movements based on how they made patterns in the acceleration graphs. So here the graphs show um, the characteristic up and down arm movement as a smoker lifts like, cigarette up to smoke. And you can see that there is a drastic spike in the Y and Z axes, while the X axis remain relatively constant. This is assuming that the sensor is placed on the wrist um, and is still. And so we can then filter out the noise around those peaks and just focus on collecting those peaks to predict the actual arm movement of the patient. So, we have a video for you guys. Uh, this is a patient that is performing this up and down movement as a smoker would do. On the left, you can see the shimmer mode, which monitors the acceleration data, as you can see in the right column. And on the right side, it's the blue sensor, which is actually the pulsometer that measures the patient's pulse, uh, which you can see uh, as a steady wave on the left side. So, in the bottom two graphs on the right column, you can see that characteristic peak that we observed. And uh, this is what we use to create our UV3D models, which we will show you in the next few slides. So we also focus on actually visualizing the data in conjunction with actually um, obtaining information from the sensors. So in order to create an accurate model of the information that we obtained, we wanted to um, register the movements of the patient and as well as those other activities. So in order to do that, we tried to, we sought to use 3D3D, which is a game development kit, and it allows us to incorporate both physics and movement capabilities as well as the Bluetooth connection that was necessary to actually make the sensors to the computer. In the process of doing so, we started out with <coughs> using basic game components and using an object pieces to actually construct a model for the same picture um, that would be able to refer mirror movements that were detected by the sensors. Then we linked the Unity program to the SEER report, which allowed us to actually move the information from the sensors to the program and then model whatever information we have here. Alright, so right about now we have a demo of the actual Unity program, but like the previous one we do not have a so, so we have it as a video right here. So, um, you can see here on the computer that, that there's a rudimentary model of an arm on the Unity program. When the program is run, it actually sets up the Bluetooth connection with the sensor, which is currently on the patient's arm and um, starts reading the acceleration data from the sensors. As the data changes from the arm moving up and down, you need to pick up those changes in acceleration in the Y and Z axes and update the arm on the screen in real time. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of biomedical applications for these sensors. Um, mostly monitoring patients outside of the hospital. However, these sensors have a lot of potential outside of the biomedical field, including rehabilitation, Sports science and athletic development, environmental sensing solutions, and efficient responses to medical emergencies. So this shows the potential of sensors um, outside of any of the biomedical field. So our results showed us that wireless body area networks can be used to collect data in real time and can be used to monitor and predict patient behavior, which is crucial because these sensors allow us to collect data real time. So we have a consistent stream of information flowing in, and so doctors can easily diagnose patients and more accurately diagnose. So throughout our presentation, we've really been repeating and emphasizing a few main points about these sensors. So first of all, they're wireless, and they continuously monitor, monitor data in real time. So as the patient is carrying out their daily schedules as they would, uh, these sensors collect the data and send it via Bluetooth to wherever it might need to go. 
Our second point, context awareness. This is what we focus on in our project. Um, we have the vital side of data, but without the kinematic data, the accelerometer data, to actually detect what the person is doing while the vital side inquiry is being monitored, we won't get the most comprehensive analysis as we can um, uh, of the data. And as Jane mentioned, there are a variety of different applications, both, both inside and outside of the biomedical field for these sensors. So we believe that these sensors could potentially be the future of the biomedical field. Um, by creating more complex visuals and models of people, not just the arm, but of the whole body itself, um, we will be able to use multiple sensors and integrate everything um, so that people could potentially use these sensors in their everyday lives. So um, in conclusion, our research has supported the idea that we can use sensors to collect data in real time, and also that they have the potential to revolutionize the way we collect patient information in the future. So we would like to extend our gratitude to our mentor, Dario Pompili, our RTA Amanda, our advisors, Chadesh and Parul, Dean Eileen Rosen, and John Patrick Hampon, and the Governor's School Board of Overseers, as well as our donors and sponsors. And finally, the Governor's School of Engineering and Technology for this tremendous week.